Yo guys, in this video I'm going to look at exactly how to set up any Moza racing wheel with F123 and get your force feedback feeling as good as possible. Now I'm going to be using the Moza R9 in this video, but I'll talk about the ideal settings for all Moza wheels including the less powerful R5 and the more powerful R21. These settings are designed to ensure you're getting the best force feedback through your Moza racing wheel while playing F123. Now the first thing you should do before even starting F123 is ensure you've connected and set up your Moza racing wheel correctly. First thing you should do is connect your wheel to your PC via USB cable and then also connect your pedals via USB as well. And make sure your steering wheel is mounted to your wheelbase and everything's powered on. Second step, go over to Moza's website and download the Moza Pit House software. Once downloaded, simply run through the installation. With Pit House then up and running and your wheel connected, you should see it on the home screen. You'll then be prompted to run through the first time setup, which involves Pit House downloading the latest firmware and updating your wheel and pedals. If you're a long time Moza user and you've had your wheel for a while, you can always check the latest firmware in the Pit House settings just to ensure everything is up to date. Once the firmware is sorted, find the F123 game logo on the right hand side in the game launcher and hit configure. This will configure your wheel to work in F123. Now, if the auto config button isn't working or isn't there, you can select the option which reads set the startup path. And then you can simply navigate to the F123 EXE file on your PC and select it. And this will manually configure the game. Once you're at this stage, you can then go ahead and start to change some force feedback settings within Pit House itself. Now I'm going to take a look at our recommended pit house settings for F123 and there are a lot of settings in pit house so I'll run through each one, I'll show you what I'd recommend setting it to and I'll give you a brief overview of what each setting does. Starting in the basic settings, the maximum steering angle should be set to 360 degrees and this is simply the maximum rotation of your steering wheel and when set to 360 degrees it won't then turn any further. Then the road sensitivity will control how much of the fine road surface detail you'll feel in F123. And I've got this set to 9 which is just below the max and you'll want to keep this high with all Moser wheels otherwise your road will start to feel silky smooth and you'll lose some detail. The force feedback intensity is the overall controller of the strength of force feedback coming from F123. Keep this set to 100% to allow all of the force feedback to be sent to your wheel. Next up, the maximum wheel speed controls how fast your steering wheel can spin or return to center. Setting this to around 50% seems ideal for this game. Then the spring strength is an artificial return to center setting, which is more designed for games that don't actually include it within its force feedback. So with F123, which does include it, set it to zero because it won't be doing anything. Then your wheel damper will smooth out some of the raw force feedback to make things feel a little bit smoother and it will also add some weight to the steering wheel at the same time. You will want some damping otherwise your steering wheel will just feel like it's shaking all of the time and feel incredibly light. Set this to 45%. With all of those set we can then move to the advanced settings. The maximum output torque limit can cap your wheel's maximum torque. This can be useful for stronger wheels such as the R21, but in all honesty, I'd leave this set to 100% for all Moser wheels. And that's because we'll be controlling the overall force feedback strength in F123 settings. Then you've got the hands-off protection and the steering wheel inertia setting. This is a safety feature that simply detects when you let go of the steering wheel and it will stop it from spinning. The steering wheel inertia sets the speed at which the wheelbase detects you'll no longer have control over the steering wheel. And I think the sweet spot is around 2800 for F123. The natural inertia setting acts similarly to your wheel damper and the basic settings, but focuses more on the inertia of your car in game. I like this setting at 200% for F123. The wheel friction setting simulates friction within the wheel itself, again, kind of similar to the damper, but lower settings here will make your steering wheel feel more lively. Go with 30% for the wheel friction. Then the speed dependent damping will adjust the damping of your racing wheel depending on your car's speed. The faster you travel, the more damping is applied. 
This will make the wheel feel harder to rotate at high speed and prevent some small vibrations when traveling at high speed in F123, which you'll be doing quite a lot. Go for about 65% here. The start point of the speed dependent damping sets the speed you need to be traveling at for the speed dependent damping to kick in. I have this set at 200 kph as you'll often be exceeding this while accelerating down long straights. Now we can move on to something a little bit different, the force feedback effect equalizer. This gives you the opportunity to really fine tune your force feedback at specific frequencies. This fine control lets you boost certain sensations while dulling others down. If you don't like a specific vibration at a certain frequency such as the rumbling on curves, or you just want to boost individual effects, here's a great place to do it. And I've gone for these following settings. At 10 hertz, I've gone 80%, 15 hertz, 120%, at 25, I've gone 170%, and then at 40 hertz, I've done 180%, and 50, I've gone for 160%. You can further fine tune your force feedback by adjusting the output curve, and this can boost the force feedback at different points during the curve. But to be honest, I've got the force feedback feeling pretty good with the basic, advanced and force feedback effect equalizer. So generally I leave this set to a default. Finally, there is another tab titled miscellaneous. This is where you can, can control your soft limit strength and a few other settings. The only thing I really do in this tab is turn down my soft limit stiffness to one and set the soft limit strength to middle. This is really down to personal preference and relates to how hard you like the soft limit to be at the end of the wheel travel. And that rounds out the pit house settings. Once these are inputted, you can save a preset so you can load it again later, which I'd highly recommend doing. And to make things easy, I'll leave a link below for this preset so you can quickly import it into your version of pit house. Next, I'm gonna boot up F123 and run through the force feedback settings to really further optimize how the force feedback feels. It's certainly worth changing the settings in both Pit House and F123 to really ensure you're getting the optimal experience. Before inputting these settings, I'd recommend running through the button test in the calibration settings, as this will ensure that the inputs are being correctly recognized from your wheel to F123. Then once everything's definitely working, jump into the vibration and force feedback settings. And the first setting is the overall strength. This can be changed depending on which Moser wheel you're running. If you're using an R5 or an R9 wheelbase, I'd recommend setting this to 95%. I like to keep it away from 100% just to ensure we aren't running into any clipping issues. This is where the gain force feedback is hitting the maximum performance of your wheel, which, which is called clipping. If you're running the R16 wheelbase, I have this set to 70% and for the R21, I opt for 60% here. Then the on-track effects, along with the rumble strip and off-track effects, all control the strength of individual surfaces around a track. Increasing any of them boosts the force feedback in that particular area. I'd recommend setting the on-track effects to 40, as this allows you to get a good feel for the track surface without overwhelming your force feedback. The rumble strip and off-track effects are much more down to personal preference, and I like these both a bit lower than my on-track effects as it makes it easier to control the car when I do venture a little too far off track. The wheel damper setting in F123 works very similar to how it does in Pit House. It smooths out some force feedback and adds some weight to your steering wheel. Again, this is very much personal preference, but I like mine set pretty low for most direct drive wheels, including the R9. I've gone for just 20, which adds some weight, but doesn't make the steering wheel feel too sticky. If you are using an R5, I'd recommend increasing it to 25 to 30, and if you're using a more powerful Moser wheel such as the R16 or R21, I'd lower it right down to zero. All that's left is to head out on track and test these settings. Personally, I think the combination of F123 and Pit House settings are perfect for this year's game, and they really allow the force feedback to do its thing, and in some areas feel better than it did in last year's game. Let me know in the comments below how you get on with these settings. And if you're liking our F123 videos so far, including our car setups and tips and tricks, consider subscribing. That way you'll see when we release a new video on our sim racing setups channel. But for now guys, enjoy the settings and I'll see you on track.